What are you doing? What are you? I'm, I'm getting ready for my reveal. What up, Hope? It's, it's, it's your girl getting back at it again. My husband has something he would like to show you. He just coined the term Rizanya. It's a mix of Riz and lasagna. Husband, show them. <sighs> <laughs> or no, let me try it again, let me try it again. Oh my God. Okay. okay. All right. Ta -ta. Oh my God. This is, not, this is not one piece. You can't Rizanya. laugh like that. Rizanya. How do you spell Rizanya? R-I-Z-Z-Anya. <laughs> Real G's move in silence like Rizanya. <laughs> Little Wayne Wood shoes. I look fantastic. You and look the best of the video should just be different angles of my hair for about 15 minutes on a slow slideshow to questionably soothing you music. I'm gonna do the 70s porn music. Oh yeah. <laughs> Take it like all slow motion while I'm messing with my hair. Okay, all right. Today we are here to watch the science behind the unproblematic nature of the capybara. Nice. Capybara? Capybara san. Um, I recently explained to somebody that mm -hmm. the reason that I always say Capybara song is because mm -hmm. we watched the amazing, amazing anime it's on good. Crunchyroll. It's great. Not because it's, you're being disrespectful to an entire culture. Correct. It's the name of an actual show. If you're ever like just really sad, right? Just mm. go on Crunchyroll and watch Capybara song. <laughs> For the rest of the day and then watch Capybara song tomorrow. Sorry. I hope you guys are doing well. Yeah. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. <laughs> I'm excited to see what this video has in store for us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Ready? Here, pull on this to start the video. Pull, pull. Do, do, do. No, you only do it twice. Just a two, two. Do. Just one, <laughs> just twice. <laughs> do. This. <laughs> Yeah! Hold on, I made this joke already. And it's a good one. Fantastic. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a better week. I hope your month is full of success. Are they and fighting? And a lot of great ventures. I hope you just come up, brother. It smells <laughs> great. It smells great. <laughs> they, they are so... They are so chill. Oh, the capybara. One of the most memeable animals to be added to Earth's roster. Almost entirely for their sheer positivity. And it's not like that fake positivity from animals like dolphins or yeah. performative actors on TikTok. <laughs> Capybaras are legitimately unproblematic, almost too much for their own good. The thing is, they have no reason to be like this. In fact, they have every excuse to be the exact 180. Capybaras are the Keith Lee of okay. the animal kingdom. Okay, yeah. Shouts out to Keith Lee, man. The Vegas area being wholesome. I you keep know what I'm So I keep like saying these things, mm -hmm. but I really have this unfounded at this point terror that like it's gonna come out that he's like a serial killer or something and dude this is what and this is how everybody can be confident about keith lee <laughs> you already know his deep dark secrets he beats the tar out of people he's, for a living not just like it. randomly it, maybe randomly maybe they call him up on a sunday he was just chilling they're like you want to just beat somebody up and he goes sure he does a food review on monday joins the ufc ring and knocks a guy unconscious <laughs> on sunday you know what i'm saying it's just, it's just, just. You can be I confident. Just, I just really like And he's got a wife and daughter. Yes. And as two. long as he's with them, they are good to go. But first, let's talk about what this aquatic stress ball is. It's a rodent, and pretty much a plus size guinea pig since that's their closest relative, even though they're like 60 times heavier. Right. Also, guinea pigs are one of the few mammals that can get folded by deep water since they can't swim, which really? is something cappies know <laughs> nothing about since half their personality stays in the water that with them. Be just me. like their cousins, the nutria, which is basically just a beaver you've never heard of, right. and the pacarana, who's probably most famous for getting abused with soap like a band Old Spice ad. But out of all rodents, capybara are the heaviest and the ones closest to the weight class of a grown man. And considering how people feel about their cousins a hundred times smaller, you would think the capybara would be the most hated oxygen sink on the planet. But the only wow. thing more ironic than the fact that it's the complete opposite is the fact that this chunky chinchilla is so chill since history shows they should really be the polar opposite. Usually when something's this unbothered, it's because they've never felt any kind of pressure from predators. It's why right. the guacas on Rottenest Island have no fear of humans since they have no natural predators. Aww. Capybara, on the other hand, have more ops than a rapper with a Rico charge. These giga gerbils have to avoid being discharged from the population by the biggest 
big cat in North America, yeah. a discount store brand crocodile, yeah. and a paraplegic Jurassic understudy. Yeah. Their childhood isn't any easier, because juveniles can get caught up with ocelots, a paralysis demon with wings, Jesus. and technically <laughs> pelicans don't count, but it's not for a lack of pride. And normally an animal that has to share an area could with this many threats to its way of life. That pelican tried to eat that capybara like I try to eat ice cream bars. He's like, ow, bro, ow. bro. He was just sitting there chilling, and then he just let the truth of truth of thoughts win. He was just like, I'm gonna try to eat him. <laughs> I'm gonna try to eat him. I gotta do it. <laughs> ah, look at the perfect phrase. Ah. And normally an animal that has to share an area could with this many threats to its way of life compensates by becoming a problem itself. For example, if zebras had a stripe for everything with the ability to bury them, they wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them. And we all know those TV static stallions ride that excuse like they get tax breaks from it. It just makes more sense for a prey animal to be more willing to throw down. Predators get active to eat. Prey animals fight to live. But what doesn't make sense is a capybara doing the mannequin challenge seven years late when there's a homicidal vice grip out looking for calories. It's kind of like honey badgers and capybaras are two ends of the nihilism spectrum. Hi. You got the four-legged assault Oreo who doesn't value anyone's life, not even its own. And then there's a hippo hamster who can't be physically <laughs> bothered enough to care. And you would think this mentality would have gotten the cappy written out of the series of life by evolution. Or maybe they have the opposite of the kangaroo situation. Uh -oh. The kangaroo situation is that kangaroos used to have to deal with some of the most cartoonishly absurd predators the world had ever seen. Stuff like a 23-foot Komodo dragon or the marsupial lion thylacleo. That prehistoric PTSD means that even though kangaroos today have to deal with zero apex land predators, they still act like they're in the trenches. So it's possible capybaras had few natural predators coming up, and now they're Helen Keller to all forms of conflict. Right. Believe it or not, capybaras weren't always the brolic beavers we know them as. Their ancestors were actually small rodents that evolved from Africa about 80 million years ago. Being small was lit because one, it's a whole lot easier to hide, and number two, eventually you get so small that putting you on a plane isn't worth the energy it would take to oh. catch you. And when their ancestors pulled up to South America 40 million years later, they showed up to an area with few natural predators and plenty of food in the forms of the grasses they like to eat. Got it. That finally explains why small women are so aggressive. I just, I had never had the answer before, but there it is, as plain as day. It just wouldn't be worth the effort to just pin their little squirrely asses down. And even if you did, you have to hear about it for the next 18 years. You just, you just evolve and go, just let her have it. It just doesn't even matter. Why are you like this? It's just a one to one ratio. I thought you would I thought you were interested. You would be like, oh yeah, Chavez, it's a good idea. I don't think that that's a scientific conclusion that I came I to. feel like that theory is in <laughs> development, but has strong headwind. <laughs> you know? Headwind, you know, because it's failing. <laughs> I thought you said Hedwig, and I was just gonna oh, let you have it. That's... And then you said Hedwin because it's failing, and yeah, I was Hedwin. like, I'm slow. Yeah, yeah. it's Hedwin. I got it's, it. Yeah, a lot of blow. <laughs> Scientists now say that it was the lack of predatory pressure that allowed this plus size rabbit pig to grow to the size it is today. That and apparently capybaras have a special form of insulin that's actually better at getting cells to divide and grow. In wow. non-AP biology terms, because I never took that class, this meant that capybaras were able to exceed their weight limits without also increasing their chances of getting clapped by cancer. Got but of it. course, nature always catches up and it wasn't like the capybara was tanky enough to disregard danger like manatees are. <laughs> and in a messed up Uno reverse, oh, becoming oh, a literal man. mighty mouse meant the capybara was now much more attractive to predators than it would have been if it would have stayed the same size pre bulk. Yeah. So it's pretty much like Cappies today have to pay for how good their ancestors had. Those are some big like Gen ass Z. Guys. It's also possible that the capybara <laughs> isn't as easy going as memes wants you to think it is. They live in groups, and each group has a dominant alpha male who gets the most food and female validation. Which he gets. Go ahead. I know where your head's at. <laughs> he gets all the bitches like a kennel. <laughs> what song did we hear that in? One of those ones that plays on that playlist, yeah. It's probably not music we should be listening to on the regular. <laughs> Which can lead to a lot of infighting in the Cappy clan. And no matter how hard the alpha male tries to flex, there's always going to be a few subordinates that get it in behind his back with his women. So even though the dominant alpha male lays more pipe than any single subordinate, a majority of the plumbing actually comes from the subordinates as a whole. That's the females also up. get a say in the matter too. Mostly because if a female ain't feeling a certain male, she dubs <sighs> him by nosediving into the nearest body I'm of water. Dead. Where she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot of drama in the cabbie community if you pay attention long enough. It's definitely not like bonobos, who seem to have all social structure figured out, albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. <laughs> that still doesn't explain why cabbie bars are so chill around animals, not even in the same species. That's great. Like, Take Cheesecake, for example. Cheesecake was a capybara who was rescued and sent to live in a refuge for neglected and abused animals. Why? But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent- Why would you neglect and abuse a cup? 
capybara. I, I think maybe that's just where it was sent to. I think maybe they just found it and didn't know where to go. You know? Okay. Yeah. Dude, and since she a refuge for neglected and abused animals. But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent a lot of time living with the sanctuary's founder alongside her many dogs. And in typical <laughs> Cappy fashion, Cheesecake became one of the dogs, eating, That's sleeping, cute. playing, and pretty much doing everything else in between with them. Eventually, she would be promoted to the de facto foster mom for any abandoned That's puppies cute. coming through the sanctuary. Oh. She would regularly adopt a family of abandoned puppies and raise them like her own blood. She would even discipline her pups if they ever got too out of line. Cheesecake was basically a Mother <laughs> Teresa for terriers and any other orphan pups. That's Those weren't adorable. the only animals she adopted in her time. There's actually a really good reason why capybaras are the best rodents to leave your children with. And why they're the polar opposite of Jesus. cheddar cheese. Something about that cheddar feed never really sat right with me. <laughs> capybaras do this thing called alloparenting, where the adults take turns watching over the babies in a group and it's kind of like revolving daycare system. It takes a village. They'll even go as far as nursing pups that aren't even theirs. Pray for bro on the left. He going through some stuff none of us can do. <laughs> the benefit is that in a jungle- Is bro, he look at him. okay? But he pouting. I don't like being touched. That's my mama. And y'all, y'all wasn't even here like that. I don't even know y'all like that. Okay. <laughs> and look, look, the mom's like side eyeing. I'm like, I yes. wish she would stop pouting like that. Shoot. Oh my God. The benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP sized threats to minors, this actually increases the Cappy Pup's chances of actually surviving long enough to celebrate their birthday. But it also means that Cheesecake wasn't just a stepmother, she was the mother that stepped up. Also, I just want to say that the same sanctuary would end up getting another capybara named Cobbler, and now Cheesecake and Cobbler are homies, and I feel That's like we should so just dope. take some time to appreciate that. Another thing to appreciate is that plenty of other animals like monkeys or painted dogs do the whole alloparenting thing, but cabbies are the only rodents that do it. Well, okay. actually, technically not really. Turns out red squirrels will adopt orphans as long as they're somewhat closely enough related to them. But that's okay. not the same as having that's a built-in nursery system in the group. So it seems that being naturally social, being as swole as they are, and having literal stepmother software in her system is what makes this He-Man hamster what it is. Capybara's got so much clout that even though they're truly native to South America, they have a pretty sizable fan base all over, but especially right. in Japan. Why Japan? Well, it all started in- He's gonna do it. Capybara-san! He's gonna do it! It's gonna come up! Possible well fan base all over, but especially in Japan. Why Japan? Well, it all started in the Izu Shaboten Zoo in 1982. A worker was cleaning out an enclosure with hot water when he turned around and realized that all the capybara were huddled around a warm puddle that had formed. The worker said, bet, or whatever the equivalent in Japanese would be. <laughs> and ever since, the Izu Shaboten Zoo would create these traditional hot yuzu baths for the water-loving hippo oh hamsters to gosh, enjoy. Yeah. Which is the entire backstory as to how this video exists. And because whatever capybara received, they give back tenfold, these videos going viral single-handedly brought in thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of yen in revenue, wow. all from people wanting to see them. Wow. Meaning it is scientifically proven, 100% non-refutable, that capybaras are good for the economy. That's if your country is so currently in a recession, think to the last time you saw a capybara hot tub party. If you can't remember <laughs> them, I think you found your problem. Mm -hmm. We don't need stimulus checks. We need more happy cabbies per capita. That's why there are happy entire websites dedicated capita. to finding the closest capybara in your area. So if I ever... New Jersey, Nevada. There oh, were there capybaras, was one but secret, they wouldn't but... let us go see Okay, him. there was one that was like sleepy though. We got yeah. a picture of one that was sleepy though. We probably shouldn't talk at the exact same time. Sorry. You go first. <laughs> There was a capybara and they were like, oh, you can pay how much? It was like $10, $15 to go play with the capybaras. And they were like, actually, they're see sleeping. You can't do that. And it's what's called Sequest and it's right by a place called like Johnny Rockets or something like that. John's Incredible Pizza. That's it. And you can go see a capybara there if it decides that it wants to wake up for you. If not, it's just going to be chilling. But there is no bath for them. So maybe we should get on them about that. Yeah, it's a lot of hay. I got it. Sure. We. Mm -hmm. We'll get a capybara. Uh huh. And we'll build an enclosure for it uh -huh. in our backyard. Uh huh. And then we can give our capybara baths. Man, we sound like we're giving Josh a lot of practice. <laughs> in, uh, well, I don't know how to build things. Right. But yeah. after it's built, I can decorate mm -hmm. it. Well, we can talk about Josh's schedule to see <laughs> how much we have energy to spend on that. <laughs> and Josh's, money. Josh's time. Ever post a picture of me in a capybara with no context? This. This is the context. Capybaras are such an unlimited serotonin hack that naturally people are going to ask if they're good pets. And my answer is, yeah, they'd probably be good pets. Question is, would you be a good owner? Here's why you probably wouldn't. One is that they poop. 
a lot. They kind of have the panda problem mm -hmm. where they eat things that don't give them a whole lot back. So to compensate, they eat a whole lot more of it, mm -hmm. which means they seem to drop deuces at will. Mm -hmm. You might not get to notice just how much because capybara also take part in coprophagia. No, they which don't. Nice no, mm -hmm. they don't. What a bad freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs> C 2023 YouTube guidelines terms means to eat food twice to get all the nutrients out of it. And if you can handle watching this infinite food glitch in action, there's the fact that you have to feed them in the first place. Remember, we're talking about a gerbil that can weigh as much as you. But you're not just Damn. feeding one cappy. Since they're social animals that don't do well alone, you'd have to adopt a buddy for him or even another one after that. Because two's company, but three's a party. Damn. And no self-respecting cappy would hop out at the after party with an entourage of one. All jokes aside, that same logic is why Switzerland considers a guinea pig a victim of abuse if it has to live alone. It's really not that different for a guinea pig. Guinea pig. I should have used that from the beginning. There's also the fact that since half their life involves water, you're gonna have to have 24 hour access to anything the capybara can at least wade in. And before you say bathtub, just remember that most of their backdoor business happens while they're in the water, so no. you might want to rethink that. Yes, but the best no. reason why you might want to hold off on adopting a walking coconut it's still a wild animal. Don't let the memes get it twisted. <laughs> Despite all the hype, they're still very much capable of inflicting violence when they want to. Right. Or when they feel like they need to. And I'ma just say, it's real cute until you get it mad and you realize you now have a 150 pound rodent with an overbite coming out. Right. In fact, in 2005, a capybara wow. in a Japanese zoo murked a spider monkey that was standing in his- There are no problems with them living together, but he murdered it. Aww. They startled each other. Oh man. There's no plans to break up the species, I guess. Yeah. By grabbing it by the neck. So if you're considering adopting a biting, pooping, eating machine, you might be better off just having kids because only one of them can give you tax credits. <laughs> or you can just move to Tigre, Argentina because the South American city has been taken over. And when I say taken over, I mean that in the most passive way possible. Oh my gosh. With fires and an unusually cold winter killing their food supply, the Cappy clan seen the spawn on mass <laughs> inside the Argentinian gated yeah. community. They're they so quite small. literally pulled up. The upside, Damn. free lawn control. The downside is these deer rabbits marrying the problems of the two animals in one package. Yeah. They destroy gardens and leave behind Hershey kisses while also becoming a danger to everyone on the road. Jeez. There have also been reports of capybara running fades with pet dogs. Oh. Although to be fair, the dogs probably started it. But there is another bright side if you want to look at it that way. The hey. biggest threat to a capybara isn't a jaguar or a caiman. It's actually humans who have historically hunted them for their meat and for their hide to turn into leather. We're their biggest op by far. What? If they decide to take back what's Aww. theirs, I'm not gonna be <laughs> mad at it. And the fact that they're doing it to a gated, rich community, I, there's a moral in there somewhere. But that's Agreed. gonna do it for this video. That was an excellent video. <sighs> okay, so, okay. Yeah. So we take three quarters of our backyard. I thought you were gonna say income. That's, we're starting better. Three quarters, I'm thinking it should only take about 60% of the income. So three quarters <laughs> of our backyard. Right. Turn it into a gigantic pool with a waterfall that doubles as a filtration Have system. Have you noticed how my wife talks about babies versus how she talks about capybaras? She has never, <laughs> ever in her <laughs> life said, let's give space and money to a baby. She has offered to hold it, feed it, visit it, pet it occasionally. But never devote 60% of our funds and or backyard space <laughs> to it. That's ridiculous. It's a good plan. That's how I know you're partially serious. <laughs> That's insanity. Let me let you guys off with this. I am done. I'll talk, we'll talk about the plan later. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video at least half as much as we did because we had a great time, had a fantastic time. Um, don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. Feel free to recommend longer videos. Chavez and I are gonna be sitting down for some marathons here soon. So feel free to recommend those. And other than that, peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's skittin' lit.